Hey everybody, Jake here, and today we're going to take a look at the Pilot Varsity. This is a very cheap entry-level disposable fountain pen, which makes it really unique out in the world of fountain pens because I know of only um, three, maybe, disposable fountain pens. I believe they're from Zebra, um, Thornton or something like that, and Pilot. Um, so we'll go ahead and jump into the spec size, light, neutral, dislike, writing comparison, and then a conclusion for the Pilot Varsity. First up, the specs. So overall length of this pen closed is going to be 132 millimeters. Um, so it's a fairly small pen when closed, a fairly small pen in general. Um, uncapped, the length of the body, excluding the nib, is going to be 115 millimeters. The length of the nib by itself is 17 millimeters. And then the length of the cap, of course, is 57 millimeters. When you post this pen, it comes up to 148, which is just a little bit um, longer than when it's closed. Weight of the body is 7 grams, where the cap's 3 grams. So overall weight is 10 grams, or 0.4 ounces for us on the metric system. Or Imperial, my bad. <laughs> Next up, some size comparisons. Um, first off, we'll just do a, a capped closed size comparison. Um, here we have the Twisby 580 All, which if you are watching my videos, I personally guarantee you have seen, more than likely. Um, so you can already tell this is a somewhat small pen, and that will become more and more obvious as this review goes on. Next up we have the Lamy Safari, um, which is again a kind of medium sized narrow pen. Sort of similar to the Twisby, a little thinner in the hand and grip. Um, and then just for fun, um, even though it's not really a fair size comparison or price comparison, we'll go ahead and pull out the Pilot Vanishing Point. So you have a lot of pens here. You have a disposable pen, an entry level pen, kind of mid tier, and in my opinion, an upper level pen until you go insane and spend $300 on a pen or $3,000 on a pen. So here it is uncapped, and it, that small trend keeps going when you compare it to the Twisby. Um, it, it has a pretty substantial size difference when compared to the Twisby. You're losing a lot of that in hand space. Next to the Safari, which is similar to the Twisby, a little bit longer. Um, again, it just seems really, really small. And of course, the Pilot Vanishing Point, it becomes a sort of joke at this point because of how small that pin is next to the Vanishing Point, which again, you're you're probably not in the market for both those pens at the same time. Those are completely different people, um, typically, or different budgets. So here it is posted. We're going to compare it to the Safari posted. The Vanishing Point's not in this because it can't be posted. And the Twisby shouldn't be posted, but I'm going to go ahead and post it and put it next to them anyway. So the Safari is long posted. This pen is actually a really good length posted. It comes up to a little bit longer than a standard you know, fountain pen which I think is decent. Um, the posting depth is nice, and it, it feels pretty good in your hand. So we'll go ahead and do one more size comparison just with something you guys might have around the house. Um, it's pretty common. I'm sure you have two or three of them laying around, to be honest, if you can manage to find them. And that is just a, uh, just a small tape measure. And this is normally used to measure things, and it's going to be used to measure things today. So this pen is roughly five large lines long. Five large lines and some change. Um, you can count the little lines. I typically don't do that because that's a lot of lines to count, and the big ones are numbered. It's just easier for everyone. Um, so it's maybe, you know, 50 little lines, 100 little lines. I don't know. It doesn't matter. On to the like list. First up's the reliability. Um, over the you know two or three weeks, month, however long I've been using this pen, I haven't had any trouble with the writing. If I uncap it and go to write, it works every single time. Um, I haven't had any hard starts, skips, anything like that, any flow issues. It writes fairly dry, which I don't like, but it writes every time which is something it has in common, kind of with the Preppy and the Petite as well. I've noticed a lot of these cheap pens write very reliably. Next thing is the um, posting. So you can see it posts fairly deeply, which is really nice because it's a really small pen. 
um, and it really needs that posting length to become usable. So I like how they made that post about halfway through the cap. On to the neutral. First up is going to be the nib and the flow. Um, this would be in the dislike list if it didn't write so reliably because this nib is scratchy and writes very dry, um, neither of which are things that I like. And I'm sure the nib looks familiar to you guys because if you watched my last video, I believe, not kind of an interview, um, the Pilot Petite has the exact same nib. They're both fine. They're both shaped the same. Same issues with the shoulders on the nib, but the Pilot Petite writes much, much smoother and much wetter. I really, really like the nib on that pen for the price. This pen, not so much. And again, this would be in the dislike if it didn't write so reliably. It's just scratchy and unpleasant to use in general. So I, I tend not to use it outside of, you know, the time I was doing this for the review. This pen's probably going to sit or be given away to someone or something like that um, just because I don't find pleasure in using it. Next thing up is the size. So when you have this capped, it's fairly standard pen size. You can put it in your pocket, you know, if you're in class or whatever, you can slide in your book bag. It's, it's not huge, it's not going to stand out, it looks like a normal pen, um, which some people might enjoy. Now when you put it in your hand, it's small, um, but when you post it, much, much more usable. Um, for most people, I imagine if you have smaller hands, you probably won't need to post this pen. Um, and debatably, even with my hands, I, I wouldn't need to post the pen, but it just feels really uncomfortable. It feels like it's going to slip down the webbing between my fingers. And I, I just don't like that in general, so I, I try to post it almost every time. So the next thing up is going to be the build quality. Um, this is a very poorly built pen. It's disposable, I understand that. It's cheap, I understand that. But a big pen is built better than this. The materials are garbage. Um, it feels flimsy in your hand. You can see how much it flexes with me barely pressing there. It just doesn't feel good. It's not a nice or well-built pen. The, the materials are atrocious. The fit and finish is terrible. Um, really, the only good thing that I enjoy about this pen is that it writes. That's all you can ask for, really, at this price with a fountain pen. But there's so many other options out there for you. Next up's the clip. This is the worst clip I have ever seen on any fountain pen, ever 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 this clip is absolute garbage if you put this in a shirt pocket and you bend over it is going to fall out every single time it's just it's pathetic and i can't stand the clip on this pen all right next up's the design um this pen is not going to win any design awards at all because it looks like a disposable pen um and that's not necessarily a bad thing you can do a lot with disposable pens to make them look somewhat attractive, but none of the colors match, the materials don't match. The only thing that matches on this pen is the finial and then and the end cap. Um, they're both black and about the same size, but the rest of it doesn't. Even the silver in the cap and the body are, are different colors of the metallic, you know, plastic actually. The body is like a overlay of some sort, sticker or something like that. But it just, it's just hideous. This is a terrible looking pen but it's disposable. So I guess it, you know, meets its requirements there. Next up's the price. This is $3-ish, and it's not worth it. Buy Jen Hal. That's all I've got to say about that. Next up, the section. This, just like the Petite and just like the Preppy, has a flat section. There's no contours or anything like that, and it's not narrow. It's it's nice and wide, but there's, there's nothing there to help you hold this pen, and it, it doesn't feel good to write with in the hand. I, I can't stand it. Next up is going to be the nib shoulders on this pen, which is the exact same thing I complained about on the Petite one, because it's the exact same nib. The nib shoulders are sharp. Um, it's not a huge issue. I really doubt you're ever going to hurt yourself with them. Like you're, It's not like you're going to be you know riding and have your fingers slip up and slice it open. But it's, it's a really weird design and, and oversight in general. I wish they had kind of just sand them off or something. I think there's a lot that could be done with them. On to the writing sample. Again, this pen writes. Um, it does write dry, and it writes scratchy. 
Also, I apologize for my handwriting here. This camera angle is really tight, and I had to kind of work my hand around the angle. So it's this is going to be bad, just to, as a warning. But it does write. There's no skipping issues that I, I find at all. And it is a true to size Japanese fine nib. It is very fine. Um, I typically use uh, Western mediums, so this is not really in my wheelhouse. But out of the three pins I've used, I've gotten kind of used to the finer nibs. But it writes and it writes really, really well. Um, because this pen is disposable, it just has the ink that came with it. It's just Pilot Black ink. There is a way to refill this pen. If you want to look into that, I personally don't think it's worth the ink. So I'm, I'm just not going to do that. But let's go ahead and um, take a look at the wetness of the ink and jump into the conclusion. So this pen, I don't like it. I can't stand it. To be honest, um, I bought this pen, the Preppy, and the Petite in a three-pack off of Amazon for $9. So I paid about 3 bucks for this pen, which is fairly standard. Um, this pen, I think, should be priced at $0.50, cents, $0.75 cents a dollar maybe. Um, it just doesn't do it for me. For $3, you can get a Jin Hao, and it'll take a while to get here, but it's going to write so, so much better than this pen. All the Jin Hao's I've had write better than this pen, except for the... 992, which I'll jump into at a later date. i um, going to try to compare it to the Monza. But don't buy this pen. Unless you just want or need a disposable cheap pen, I can't recommend it. This is probably the worst pen I've ever reviewed. And in comparison to the other budget pens, it's not worth it. Just buy a preppy or a petite one. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Keep an eye out for my next video. Thanks.